Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us here for Western Mass News at 6. I'm Jordan Jagalinzer. Chris Pisano is off tonight. Let's take a look at what's making headlines. We're hearing exclusively from the head of the Holyoke Soldiers Home, who was in charge when COVID-19 first started to break out at the facility. 76 veterans have died from the virus. The Hamden County Sheriff has ordered a precautionary lockdown of the Ludlow Jail while all inmates are tested for COVID-19. As of this morning, there are a total of eight inmates who have tested positive for the virus. And a popular golf driving range in East Longmeadow was ordered to shut down and has been fined. New information as Western Mass News continues to investigate developments at the Holyoke Soldiers Home, where 92 veterans have now died since March, 76 confirmed with COVID-19. The attorney representing the, the Soldiers Home superintendent is speaking out today, saying that he wants to clear Bennett Walsh's name. Western Mass News reporter Audrey Russo is getting answers. She joins us live in Springfield with her exclusive television interview. Audrey? Attorney William Bennett says that the state is perpetuating falsehoods by not admitting that Bennett Walsh had reached out to them during the outbreak. In fact, Attorney Bennett says Walsh documented coronavirus cases, reached out to different state departments and had asked for help and National Guard assistance all by March 27th. Now, he says that that's just days before Bennett Walsh was placed on administrative leave. Two address the falsehoods. Attorney William Bennett saying it's his goal to clear the name of his nephew, Holyoke Soldiers Home Superintendent Bennett Walsh. Attorney Bennett says Walsh is still on paid administrative leave, placed there at the end of March when news came to light of a growing deadly COVID-19 outbreak in the facility. He wants these falsehoods uh, to be uh, cleared up, as good name be restored and that all the facts for whatever happened become known for the families. Uh, they deserve to know everything that did go on. Attorney Bennett provided more than 50 pages worth of documents, including emails, texts, and forms sent to and from Walsh in the week leading up to being placed on leave. These documents, Attorney Bennett says, refute claims from the governor's office and state officials that Walsh had kept them in the dark about the virus. In one document dated March 22nd, Walsh had filled out a report outlining a positive COVID-19 case found a day earlier. That report was sent to state health and veteran services officials. A March 25th email shows state public health officials expressing confidence that Walsh and the home were following proper DPH guidelines. Are you able to say if any decisions made by Bennett contributed to the spread of the virus at all? We don't believe so. You don't believe so? No, I do not. But again, there's an investigation going on. Nobody's perfect. Everybody was trying their best. And we'll have to wait and see what the investigations determine. We asked Attorney Bennett about the governor's claims that he'd only found out about the outbreak after veterans had already died. It may very well be that no one did tell the governor what was going on. That's quite possible. But he says the documents show there's no question. The Department of Public Health, the Executive Office of Health and Human Services, and the Department of Veteran Services all knew how dire the situation had become. In fact, Attorney Bennett claims Walsh was put on paid administrative leave after speaking with Holyoke Mayor Alex Morse about the outbreak. They were livid that he had talked to the mayor. Uh, they asserted that he kept them in the dark and that he was trying to cover things up and those things are not true. As for whether or not Walsh will be able to return to his job as superintendent, or if he even wants to, Attorney Bennett says they're just focusing on the immediate. Certainly can return to his good name. We're going to wait and see what the investigations reveal. Holyoke Mayor Alex Morse confirmed to us and has said from the beginning that he did in fact speak with Bennett Walsh before Walsh was placed on administrative leave. And one thing to note, the documents provided to us today by Attorney Bennett were all part of a public records request that we submitted to the state. The state had denied our request. Live in Springfield, Audrey Russo for Western Mass News.
Audrey, thanks for that live report. The Massachusetts Department of Public Health releasing their latest numbers. So far, the number of tests conducted in the state is at 545,481, with just over 4,900 tests being done today. The Department of Public Health confirming a total of 93,693 positive cases today. 6,473 people have died from COVID-19, with 57 new deaths reported today. And now we're breaking down those numbers for you county by county here in Western Mass. Hamden County is reporting 5,796 coronavirus cases. Hampshire County, 840. Franklin, 315. And Berkshire County, 537. In total, Western Mass is reporting 7,488 COVID-19 cases. The Hamden County Jail in Ludlow is on lockdown after eight inmates tested positive for COVID-19. Western Mass News reporter Leon Purvis is live in Ludlow with the very latest. Leon? Jordan, over the Memorial Day weekend, the Hampton County Sheriff's Office says a high number of inmates brought here to this jail scored high on the COVID-19 screening pick process, excuse me. Uh, now, this is the first number of inmate cases at the Hampton County Jail since Governor Charlie Baker declared a state of emergency back in March. Overall, 12 staffers have tested positive. Eight of them recovered, four currently have coronavirus. In response, the facility has gone into lockdown, limiting who is coming in and out. The Hampton County Sheriff says they're doing everything they can to stop the virus from spreading. We are going to um, nurse these individuals back to health and back into general population. And if any other cases pop up, which they probably will over the course of this pandemic, we will do the same. A jail, a prison, a house of correction is no different than a nursing home, a hospital, in places where you have a confined number of people uh, in an area. Now the sheriff says tested was testing was conducted today and they will continue to do so the rest of the week. No word yet on how long this will take to complete. Live in Ludlow, Leon Purvis, Western Mass News. Leon, thanks for that live report. Anger and confusion after a popular golf driving range in East Longmeadow was ordered to shut down and fined, while others in Western Mass continue to operate. Western Mass News reporter Sarah Grinelli joins us live from East Longmeadow with what she found out today. Sarah? Fenway Golf got hit with a $300 fine for opening up their driving range. We spoke with the business owner who says he thought he can open up under the governor's guidelines. Fenway Golf, a family owned business, is normally a hot spot for people enjoying the nice weather. But on Tuesday, the golf course and food stand were open. The driving range closed after the town issued a cease and desist order along with a fine for opening up the driving range on Friday. I had done some research on ranges that were opening in the state and uh, I read in the governor's order that if similar businesses or organizations or facilities like yours are open, essentially you should feel free on a good faith to open. And uh, so I decided, you know what, if other ranges are going to be able to open, I should be able to open too. Western Mass News spoke with President Andrew Fisk. He says he thought he could open under phase one of the governor's I orders. Did. I mean, I thought I could be open, but she said I couldn't. So we've closed down on Friday at 4 p.m. and we've been closed ever since. Fisk is facing a $300 fine from the town. Western Mass News checked in with the town manager, Mary McNally. She says Fenway Golf was told three times they were not allowed to operate their driving range due to ongoing coronavirus restrictions. That's something Fist says he wasn't aware of. The town has said that they gave me a warning. Um, I don't know if a warning is written warning or what it is, but I've, I did not receive any written warning. But in some other communities, driving ranges were allowed to open. The River Hollow Family Golf Center in Munson posting on their Facebook page appreciation for getting approval from the town to open. But in the meantime, Fisk says he is grateful for the outpouring support from the community. I really did not expect it. It's been unbelievable, unbelievable. The East Longmeadow town manager says she will continue to look in the matter. Live in East Longmeadow, Sarah Grinelli, Western Mass News. And for more coverage on the coronavirus emergency as it develops, you can log on to our free streaming Western Mass News app.
still to come here on Western Mass News with beaches and parks opening up. We're getting answers on what you should know before you go to one. And new developments in the search for a Yukon student suspected of murder. What we know about the suspect straight ahead. Jacob? And we've seen a ton of sunshine allowing our temperatures to rise into the 80s. In fact, upper 80s through northern Berkshire County and into Franklin County. We have another scorcher in the books for tomorrow. How will we get in my first morning forecast after the break?